move over San Francisco and Portland. There's another competitor for most apocalyptic city in the US. Seattle's gone to hell and not even all its Starbucks iced macchiatos can quench the flames. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. And welcome to the Emerald City of Seattle, a stunning Northwest sanctuary full of rampant homelessness, drugs, crime, and human feces. It's like Washington saw how bad Oregon and California got and said, hold my overpriced craft IPAs. And it just keeps getting worse. In Seattle and King County, homeless camp removals keep happening. Services are offered. But at the end of the day, there are parts of the city like Ballard where even though efforts are tried, the issue doesn't get solved. It just moves around. There is no hiding Seattle's drug problem. Everybody is just giving in to their demons. It is here to see in the open every day. Law enforcement say we are seeing more young people involved in these crimes, from homicide to gun violence and auto theft. At this rate, Seattle might as well rename the Space Needle the Space Syringe. Is that what the Fremont Troll under the bridge uses to shoot up? It's a hellhole and a half, and on top of that, it's ridiculously expensive to live there. It's no wonder Seattle now ranks number one among U.S. cities for residents considering leaving. How did Seattle deteriorate to this level? Part of it is ineptitude. Seattle spends ridiculous amounts of money with very little to show for it. They spent $65 million to move 300 homeless people. Despite having spent almost a billion dollars over the past 11 years to tackle homelessness, homelessness has actually increased. That's like paying plumbers a small fortune to fix your toilet, and not only do they not fix it, they also somehow break your microwave. Washington State currently has the highest homeless population, second only to California, and it is spread out to the schools and parks. There are even homeless camps in the trees. Seattle tries to clear out homeless encampments, but the homeless keep coming back like they never left. And they're living the high life, hanging out, doing drugs by the pool. It's perfect weather for a dip in the new pool at this homeless encampment in Seattle, or maybe a poolside puff of fentanyl. Fentanyl next to a pool. This sounds like a Jimmy Buffett song if instead of margaritas he was into opioids. Rest in peace, by the way. Of course, neighbors who pay to live there don't exactly love it. It's not safe. Please get him out of here. Cheryl's apartment overlooks the encampment. She says she hears gunfire almost nightly. Hotel Washington here was recently the site of a homicide, but that hasn't changed much. The state says they need to do housing outreach for the people here first, but that's been in the works for months. And after a homicide, drugs, gunfire, and theft, Diane says waiting any longer means putting the people here at risk. Did you think the murder would change things here? Well, I think everybody thought the murder was going to change things. Oh my God, there was a homicide on that property. They're really going to come and give us some attention now. And they didn't. It's no wonder the local seniors feel the state has turned its back on them. And here I thought the weather was the most depressing thing about Seattle. I never saw I'd say this, but I'm glad Kurt Cobain isn't around to see this. There's a lot more to it than just incompetence, though. I'll tell you what's really going on after the break. Welcome back. Now, many people in Seattle are angry, and not just at the way the city has been handling its homeless problem. They're angry at Seattle's leaders and their far-left ideologies for screwing over the city and causing the problem in the first place. Just like the rest of the West Coast, Seattle has pushed for a lot of progressive policies. One of them was decriminalizing drugs, even hard ones like meth and heroin. Because if you can't do meth and heroin by a pool, then summer will be ruined. Proponents argue that this is the best way to get people to find treatment and promote social justice, especially for minorities who are more likely to get incarcerated. But it's hard to see how this has improved Seattle. Washington state now has the fastest rising drug overdose rate of any U.S. state, beating even California. And a lot of it is now being driven by fentanyl. Thanks, China. It's no surprise, then, that most Seattle residents now support the idea of public drug use arrests. Really? They don't want people shooting up heroin next to a playground? What's next? They're going to want a ban on firing bazookas in movie theaters? And yet the Seattle City Council voted earlier this summer to reject legislation that would have allowed for prosecution of public drug use, citing the need to treat drug addiction as a public health issue, not a crime. A statewide law took effect recently to make drug possession and public drug use gross misdemeanors. 
Emphasis on gross, apparently. But so far, Seattle's city code doesn't give the city the authority to prosecute those types of gross misdemeanors. Seattle's mayor is proposing another measure for prosecuting drug use to align with state law, adding $27 million for treatment. According to Axios, the new ordinance would let the city prosecute drug possession and public use, but it also says police should generally only arrest someone for those crimes if that person presents a threat of harm to others. Of course they present a threat of harm to others, and not because they're violent, but because there are so many of them passed out in the streets of Seattle, it poses a tripping hazard. Them tripping leads to others tripping. And speaking of harm, let's talk crime. In the aftermath of the BLM protests in 2020, which then Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkham famously called the Summer of Love, Seattle council members joined calls to defund the police. As a result, police staffing fell to a 30-year low in 2022. But now everyone's regretting it. Because when they're working properly, police are a lot like fuel pumps. You don't realize how much they're doing until they're gone and everything starts falling apart. Surprise, surprise, it turns out reducing police presence was the last thing Seattle needed, especially for all those businesses that were left to fend off criminals in the George Floyd-inspired Autonomous Zone protests. The city is paying millions to settle lawsuits over that, by the way. Last year, homicides skyrocketed by 24%, while motor vehicle thefts climbed by 30%. I guess we're all just in the middle of the decade of love. Seattle's now reversing course on defunding police. But things haven't really improved this year. There's been so much crime that some residents had stopped mail going directly to their mailboxes. People weren't just stealing from mailboxes, but even from U.S. Postal Service trucks. That's right, tampering with the mail. It's like they're checking off boxes on a crime bingo card. Not even staying at home is safe. Home invasions are on the rise, especially targeting vulnerable residents like elderly Asians. At this point, Seattle's current police force is stretched to the limit, so it's understandable that many of them are resigning. And sadly, they're way harder and more expensive to replace than a fuel pump. Some are directing their frustration at the current leadership, such as this policewoman with 23 years of experience. She quit with a scathing letter which said that the toxic mix of the Seattle City Council's absurdity, the spinelessness of the mayor, the leniency of the prosecutor's office, and Seattle Police Chief Adrian Diaz's failed leadership has accelerated this city's downhill slide straight to rock bottom. She goes on to accuse the Seattle City Council of losing touch with reality and prioritizing politics and radical ideologies rather than genuinely serving the city. Seattle politicians Prioritizing politics and radical ideologies? Nah. Now, Seattle is making a push to get new police recruits. But, according to a leaked memo obtained by the Jason Rance Show on KTTH, Seattle's Mayor Bruce Harrell demanded the Seattle Police Department show fewer white men and officers with military bearing in recruitment materials. Because the best way to fight crime is with racism. Makes sense, since the BLM protest showed the best way to fight racism is apparently with crime. The mayor's digital strategy lead asked them to place officers of color, officers of different genders, and officers who are younger on their recruiting materials instead. But don't worry, that's totally not prioritizing politics and radical ideologies. Given the amount of hate that Seattle City Council members are receiving, it's no surprise that a majority aren't going to run for re-election in November later this year. I guess they're just tired of having to ask the police to respond to all the human feces being flung their way. Somehow it always comes back to poop. And just like Seattle's police department, America uncovered once diverse supporters who can give voluntary contributions on patreon.com slash America Uncovered. White men and those with military bearings are welcome too. We don't discriminate. And if you want to see another city that's just as messed up as Seattle, then click on this video about Portland. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.